The sky was painted in shades of gray, remnants of a storm that had torn through the coastal town only days before. Roads were scattered with debris, power lines lay tangled across empty fields, and the remnants of people's homes and lives lay scattered in the muddy wreckage. The smell of damp earth mixed with smoke filled the air, and silence loomed, broken only by the occasional call of crows and the crunching sound of Alex's boots on the gravel. Alex had arrived early that morning, his backpack heavy with gear, maps, and a few personal supplies. Young, with a shock of dark hair and a wiry frame, he looked both exhausted and determined. He was an engineer, a fixer of problems, and seeing the devastation around him stirred something deep inside. He knew he couldn't just stand by and watch. He had to help. His first stop was the town's temporary command center, set up hastily in a half-collapsed school gymnasium. Tables were scattered with maps and reports. Radios crackled intermittently, and people looked weary but focused. Aid workers, emergency responders, and a few local volunteers huddled in small groups, discussing what little resources they had and how best to distribute them. Alex took a deep breath and approached the head of operations, a middle-aged woman named Sarah, who looked as if she hadn't slept in days. Alex Mason, he introduced himself. I'm an engineer. I'm here to help. Sarah's eyes lit up with relief, though the weariness in her voice was unmistakable. We could certainly use it. Resources are stretched thin, and a lot of people are isolated. Roads are blocked, communications are spotty at best. If you can think of anything to get supplies to those cut-off villages, I'm all ears. Alex frowned, his mind already spinning with ideas. Has anyone tried using off-road vehicles or even makeshift transports? Sarah shook her head. We don't have enough working vehicles, let alone anything equipped for those kinds of routes. Many of our trucks were damaged, and most of the roads are either washed away or blocked by landslides. Alex paused, looking out toward the mountains where he knew many small communities were still stranded. There had to be a way. People in those villages were running out of food, clean water, and medical supplies. They were trapped, cut off from help, and time was running out. Do we have access to any tools or equipment? He asked, feeling a spark of an idea forming. A few. Mostly basic tools, some leftover parts, scrap metal. But it's not much. Alex grinned, his eyes brightening. That's all I need. Sarah looked at him skeptically. You really think you can make something out of a pile of junk? Not something. A solution, he replied. I'm going to build a fleet. Sarah laughed, a brief, surprised laugh that faded into a weary smile. All right, engineer, show us what you've got. With Sarah's tentative blessing, Alex began gathering anything he could find. Old engine parts, broken down motorcycles, scraps of steel. He commandeered a corner of the gymnasium and set to work, drawing up rough sketches, scribbling equations and reconfiguring engine designs. He was crafting something entirely new. A hybrid transport vehicle built from whatever scraps he could salvage. As the hours passed, a few curious volunteers came to see what he was up to. They watched as he modified parts, welded frames, and made adjustments to designs he knew were experimental at best. But Alex's enthusiasm was infectious, and soon a small team of locals had joined him, each one offering a helping hand. They worked late into the night, the sound of hammers and drills echoing in the gymnasium, fueled by a shared purpose. Slowly but surely their rough machines began to take shape. By the time dawn approached again, the first vehicle was nearly complete. It was rough around the edges, but it was functional. A sturdy, off-road hybrid that could navigate the treacherous terrain and carry supplies to those who needed it most. As the early morning light filtered into the gym, Alex stepped back, admiring their work with a sense of accomplishment and quiet pride. His fingers were scraped, his clothes smeared with oil, but he was ready. The real work was just beginning. He turned to his makeshift team, a gleam of determination in his eyes. This is just the start. We're going to get supplies out there, whatever it takes. And with that, they prepared to embark on their first mission, racing against time and the elements to bring hope to those who had lost it. The next day, Alex was back at the makeshift garage, working tirelessly on his first prototype. He was exhausted but determined. He knew he couldn't pull this off alone. 
Just as he was wrestling with a stubborn engine part, he heard voices coming from the entrance. He looked up to see a small group of people heading his way, each carrying tools, bags, and wearing expressions of cautious curiosity. They introduced themselves, and Alex quickly recognized that he was in the presence of an impressive team. There was Jamie, a wiry electrical engineer with a background in renewable energy. Leo, a mechanical expert from the automotive industry who knew engines inside and out. Priya, a logistics coordinator who had been managing transportation networks for a major tech company. And Zara, a software engineer who specialized in control systems. Alex wasted no time and outlined his plan with a contagious enthusiasm. Look, we all know the situation is dire, but there's a way we can help. We can use the scrap metal, broken down vehicles, and whatever else we can find to build a fleet of all-terrain rescue vehicles. It won't be pretty, but it will be fast, rugged, and efficient. These vehicles could be the lifeline for isolated areas. Jamie looked intrigued, nodding along but Leo raised an eyebrow skeptically. You want us to put our lives in the hands of vehicles we've put together in a couple of days? Using scrap parts? Priya crossed her arms, clearly weighing the risks. And even if we manage to build these things, who's to say they'll hold up on the roads? The mountains and mudslides are no joke. Alex met their doubts with calm determination. I know it sounds risky, but people are out there waiting for help, and no one else is coming anytime soon. I'm not asking for perfection. I'm asking for purpose. We have the skills. If we work together, we can make it happen. Zara, who had been quiet up until now, finally spoke up, her voice steady. I think it's worth a shot. We're all here because we want to help, right? We could sit around and wait or we could actually make a difference. Let's get these vehicles on the road. After a few more tense moments, Jamie nodded in agreement. I'm in but we'll need to manage power efficiently, especially if we're building hybrid engines. I can work on the electrical systems. Leo gave a reluctant shrug, smirking slightly. Guess I'll keep an eye on the engines, make sure they don't blow up on us. Priya sighed, finally cracking a smile. All right, I'll manage supply routes. We'll need to map out the quickest paths to the villages, avoiding landslides and blocked roads. With a shared look of determination, the team got to work. They cleared out the remaining debris in the garage, claimed their workspaces and set to planning, designing, and building with a single-minded focus. Each member brought their expertise to the project, Jamie rewiring battery systems, Zara programming control modules, Leo rigging up powerful engines, and Priya mapping out every detail of their supply routes. In between the intense work sessions, there were moments of laughter and even heated debates. Leo and Jamie butted heads constantly over the balance of power and durability, and Priya often had to play the peacemaker. But every argument, every point of contention, made the team stronger. They were learning to work together, to blend their skills, and to trust each other's judgment. After a few grueling days and nights, they finally had a small convoy of rugged, patched-up vehicles. Each one looked like a unique blend of old and new with stripped-down frames, re-engineered engines, and reinforced tires. The vehicles were far from glamorous, but they were strong and ready for the rough roads ahead. As they loaded up the first vehicle with supplies, Alex looked at his team, a deep sense of pride welling up inside him. You guys are incredible, he said, smiling. We built this from nothing. Now let's go prove that we're more than just a bunch of engineers. We're a rescue team. With a chorus of nods, the team climbed into their makeshift vehicles. Engines roared to life, and one by one they rolled out, bound for the isolated villages in desperate need of help. As they left the town behind, each of them knew they were not only driving towards the disaster zone, they were driving toward a new purpose, a new beginning, and maybe even a bit of redemption. The rescue fleet rolled out before dawn, headlights cutting through the misty darkness. Alex drove the lead vehicle with Leo beside him, gripping the dashboard as they bounced over rocky paths and through muddy ruts. Behind them, Jamie, Priya, and Zara followed in their own modified vehicles, each equipped with all-terrain tires, winches, and reinforced frames they had painstakingly built together. But as the first few miles passed, the true challenges of the journey became clear. 
They'd barely crossed the edge of town when the rain started. Thick sheets of water poured down, drumming on the roofs and obscuring their vision. The paths turned into slick mudslides, and every bend seemed like a new hazard. Alex gripped the steering wheel tightly, scanning the road ahead and carefully directing the team over the radio. Everyone, stay close and take it slow, he called. If there's any sign of trouble, stop immediately. For a while, they managed to push forward. But soon, tensions in the convoy grew. In Alex's vehicle, Leo's jaw was clenched as he watched Alex navigate through increasingly rough patches of road. You're taking this way too fast, Alex, Leo grumbled. These roads can't handle it, neither can the vehicles. Alex tightened his grip, frustration flickering in his eyes. We don't have time to slow down, Leo. The people out there need us, and they can't wait for us to play it safe. A crackle came over the radio. It was Jamie, his voice tense. Alex, my engine's making a weird noise, like something's grinding. I think we need to stop and check it out. Alex sighed, feeling the weight of the decision. Stopping would mean risking precious time, but pushing on might cost them an entire vehicle. He decided to pull over, and soon the team gathered, huddling against the rain as Jamie lifted the hood, squinting at the problem. I told you these rigs wouldn't last on this road, Leo muttered his voice barely audible over the rain. This was a rushed job, and we didn't have time to test it properly. Zara stepped in, crossing her arms defensively. We knew the risks going in, Leo. We're doing the best we can with what we've got. Priya, who had been quiet, finally spoke up. Arguing isn't helping anyone. We need to keep going and figure this out together. But let's be smart about it. Just then, a crack of thunder echoed through the mountains, followed by a loud, shuddering noise. Ahead of them, part of the narrow path they'd planned to take had begun to collapse, sending rocks and mud sliding down the hillside. The team froze, watching as the ground gave way before them. Their main route was blocked. Everyone turned to Alex, waiting for his decision. For a moment, he felt the weight of their doubt and fear pressing down on him. But then he took a deep breath his mind racing. He quickly scanned their map, remembering a barely visible trail he'd noticed earlier that ran parallel to their route, skirting the edge of the forest. Listen up, everyone. I remember another path about a half mile back. It's rough and it's probably narrow, but it'll get us around this blockage. We're going to turn around and take that route. Leo shook his head, frustration evident in his eyes. That's a risky move, Alex. We don't know what's on that path. It could lead us straight to another dead end. It could, Alex agreed. But it's the only option we have right now. Trust me. I wouldn't lead us into this if I didn't believe it would work. The others exchanged uncertain glances, but Alex's steady gaze and calm voice seemed to settle them. Reluctantly, they nodded, climbed back into their vehicles, and followed his lead. The alternate path was indeed rough, twisting through thick trees and over uneven ground. At several points, they had to stop to remove fallen branches or navigate around large rocks, and more than once, one of the vehicles nearly skidded off the path. But Alex remained focused, guiding the team through each hazard, offering directions and encouragement over the radio. His confidence seemed to ripple through the group, and slowly, their doubts began to fade. After what felt like hours, they finally broke through the dense forest and onto a clear ridge. Below, they could see the faint lights of the first isolated village flickering in the distance. A sense of relief washed over them, and even Leo managed to grin. All right, Alex, he said, clapping him on the shoulder. I'll admit it. You got us through. Alex gave a small, tired smile. We did it together, he replied looking around at the rest of his team. They were tired, soaked, and covered in mud, but there was a new sense of unity among them. They had faced the worst together and come out stronger. For the first time, they truly felt like a team. As they reached the outskirts of the flooded village, the team came to a sudden halt. The once narrow mountain path leading down had turned into a muddy trap, blocked by a massive landslide of boulders, trees, and dirt. Alex's heart sank as he saw it. An impassable wall of debris stood between them and the stranded village, 
where people were waiting desperately for the supplies. The radio crackled with tension as Priya spoke. Alex, there's no way we can get through this. Even if we try to dig, it could take days. Jamie shook his head, worry in his voice. We can't just turn back. We've come too far, and they're depending on us. Alex scanned the area, his mind whirring with possibilities. Turning back wasn't an option, and he knew they had to think fast. Then, his eyes caught a glimpse of a steep, rugged trail climbing along the opposite slope. It was narrow, rocky, and treacherous, a path barely fit for mountain goats, let alone heavy rescue vehicles. But it was their only chance. What if we take that path? Alex said, pointing toward the precarious route. Leo squinted at the path, his face tightening with alarm. You're serious? Alex, that's not a road. That's practically a cliffside. One wrong move and we'll all end up tumbling down the mountain. Alex nodded, acknowledging the risk. I know. But it's the only way around this mess. If we're careful, we can make it. We'll secure ropes to the vehicles, take it one foot at a time. We just have to trust each other and trust these rigs. The team exchanged glances, and despite the fear, they each gave a nod. Priya spoke up first, her voice steady. I believe in this. Let's get it done. With everyone on board, they worked together to prepare the vehicles, securing ropes and adjusting tire pressure to maximize grip. Each vehicle was tethered to the one behind it, forming a chain that would keep them steady. Alex led the convoy, guiding them as they began their climb up the treacherous path. The vehicles groaned and jolted as they crawled over the rocks, mud slipping beneath the tires. The path was narrow, and in some places they were so close to the edge that a single misstep could have been disastrous. Yet, they moved with careful precision, listening to each other's calls and watching for signals. Jamie was behind Alex, shouting directions, and Zara kept everyone focused with calm reminders over the radio, ensuring each move was coordinated and deliberate. Halfway up, Alex's vehicle hit a patch of loose gravel, skidding dangerously close to the edge. His heart pounded, but he gripped the wheel, steering against the skid while Leo shouted directions. The vehicle stabilized, and Alex breathed a sigh of relief. He glanced back at the team, who all looked equally tense but determined. Finally, after what felt like hours, they reached the top of the path and began their descent. The village came into view, nestled at the base of the mountains, and Alex felt a surge of relief and triumph. They carefully navigated down the trail and rolled into the village. People gathered, faces lighting up as they realized help had finally arrived. The team quickly jumped into action, unloading medical supplies, food, and water. The villagers' gratitude was overwhelming, and the weight of what they'd accomplished began to sink in. A little girl ran up to Alex, handing him a small flower she'd picked from the rubble, her eyes shining with gratitude. Alex smiled, accepting the gift and realizing that every risk they'd taken had been worth it. The team shared a look of quiet pride, each of them understanding that they'd not only made a difference, they'd proven to themselves what they were capable of. As they finished unloading, Priya glanced at Alex, her expression one of respect and relief. You were right, Alex. We needed to trust each other, and we made it. Alex smiled, exhaustion etched into his face, but his eyes bright with satisfaction. We're not just a team anymore. We're a family. And as the sun set over the mountains, casting a warm glow over the battered village, the team knew they'd accomplished something extraordinary. In the days following the rescue, word of Alex and his team's daring journey spread throughout the region. Villagers told stories of how they'd watched the convoy arrive like a miracle, how the young team braved impossible terrain to deliver supplies. The gratitude and admiration the team received was overwhelming, yet what filled Alex with the greatest sense of pride was knowing they'd truly made a difference. After returning to their makeshift headquarters, Alex and the team gathered around a small table, each of them exhausted yet triumphant. Their rugged vehicles, covered in mud and scrapes, stood nearby as reminders of the obstacles they had overcome. Leo, leaning back in his chair with a rare smile, looked at Alex. All right, I'll admit it. You pulled off something I didn't think was possible. This wasn't just a rescue. It was a breakthrough. Zara nodded thoughtfully. 
This technology we've pieced together could be used anywhere. Imagine if we could refine it, make it more accessible, and help other regions facing disasters. Jamie added, We could publish the designs and data. If our experience could help others in times of crisis, we'd be creating something lasting. Inspired by the idea, they got to work documenting everything. Design sketches, technical specifications, and the practical modifications they'd made along the way. Priya compiled route maps, tips on navigating rugged terrain, and strategies for managing resources efficiently. Together, they created a comprehensive guide, a blueprint for others to use in disaster recovery efforts. They shared it openly, sending it to other regions and organizations in need, and it quickly gained recognition as a pioneering approach to emergency response. In the weeks that followed, Alex and his team became local heroes, symbols of resilience and hope in the face of disaster. Reporters, aid organizations, and even government officials reached out to learn from their experience. Their story became an inspiring example of racing against adversity and how ingenuity, teamwork, and courage could bring about real change. But there was one more idea brewing among the team, a bigger vision for the future. One evening, as they looked over their notes and discussed the impact of their project, Priya spoke up, her eyes gleaming with excitement. What if we kept going? She suggested. What if we turned this team into something more permanent? An organization dedicated to emergency technology and disaster relief? We've seen the need firsthand and we know how to make a difference. The others looked around, nodding, the excitement palpable. Alex smiled, knowing that they were all thinking the same thing. Their skills, their determination, and their teamwork had the potential to reach far beyond this single mission. And so, together, they founded an emergency response company dedicated to developing innovative technology for disaster zones. They created adaptable, durable, and affordable solutions that could be deployed quickly to areas in need. Their work would go on to save countless lives, each mission a testament to their commitment to helping others. In time, the team's story of bravery and resilience became a symbol of hope and innovation. And for Alex and his friends, it was only the beginning. They had discovered a purpose that united them, a purpose that reminded them, no matter the obstacles, there was always a way to bring light into the darkest of times.